Kentucky. Pride of Jenny, a half length. Amelia's Jewel moves up on the outside. Takes Pride of Jenny, is coming clear. Great pipe opener. Bring on the Cox Plate. Amelia's Jewel. 50, letter length and a half. Imperatrice is flying now as Burr at the 50. Imperatrice has got her and raced on by. Imperatrice by a length. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, for Group 1 Turnbull Stakes Day at Flemington. I can't wait to get into this card. It's going to be it's going to be an absolute ripper. we two good things going around on the program, being Princess Grace and Romantic Warrior, but we'll get into them in the preview in a bit later. Uh, can't wait to get into the preview. Let's get into it and find some winners. Race number one at Flemington is a benchmark 78 handicap over the 1200 meters, and I've got Buse on top. I'm quite confident in his chances. Jamie Carr replacing Blake Shen. Of course, he suspended off the fall he had last week. Mike Mick. Kent Jr. Michael Price train Barry number four is perfect down the straight. I think this horse is clearly the one to beat. There's a no like it's passed through narrowly pipped on the post. Jamie Carr replacing is just an amazing jockey booking for this horse. 56 kilos, proven straight track horse. I think it'll just be winning. Our last cash has been a bit of a shock winning its last couple down the straight. Craig Williams has the big weight here in 17, doesn't help it. William Thomas, I think, can, I think can improve with the D Oliver in the saddle. Just need to see it do something first. And Storm Bolt, I thought, I thought first up for Cindy Alders and could run a race. But Buse for mine, race one, Flemington, hard fit, Jamie Carr. It'll be winning 30 the win. Race number two at Flemington is the listed Dali Maribyrnong trial stakes over the 1,000 metres, the flying 1,000. And I'm with Wolfgang here for Lloyd Cannonwell, Lucy Gowans, and James McDonald in the saddle. His trials and jump bets have been ultra impressive. I'm honestly surprised you're getting an inch way quote. I think this horse should be favoured and added odds on quoted that because I think he's going to race away from them here. Win by about three lengths. So really confident on his chances and he looks a speedster from the exit. Blue Illusion looks like it'll be better over 12 to 14. Though it is by out of blue point, Jamie Carbuck for the debut. Um, so is a bit has got a bit going for it. Bodyguard comes down from Sydney for Peter and Paul Stone and Craig Williams to ride. And Dublin Downs been the, another one that's been jumping out and trialing well. But Wolfgang for mine, thirty the win. Race number three at Flemington is the listed super and post stakes over the 1800 metres and I've got Riff Rocket on top, James McDonald for this time, Chris Waller. I'm really confident in this horse's chances at four starts for two wins in a third. It was really good last start, was the run of the race last start coming from the back of the field. Um, if they go hard here, which could be likely, well, there are quite a few of these going forward. I think it will set it up for him. It's just, I think, the best horse in the race and could be leading on to an, uh, onto the, onto a, on a better race in the spring. Ambassadorial for second likely goes forward from that barrier. They have to. Jordy Childs has ridden an absolute peach's last three. Uh, Fist of Fury was good last start. Um, they would need to improve. And Wings of Song. Watch out for wherever this horse runs. If it runs tonight or tomorrow, it's going to be very competitive. Uh, and I think it'll run really well uh, within mine to an Oaks. Uh, but just watch where it runs. But the Riff Rocker for mine and the Superimpose, I'm pretty confident. 40 the win. Race number four at Flemington is the group two. Edward Manifold stakes over the mile, and it's Zardozzi for mine on top. Clear excuses its first two runs this campaign. Had absolutely no luck on Sunday. Comes here, weeks back up. Chad Schofield takes the ride from barrier number one. I don't know where it's going to get to in the run, but if it has any luck in the straight, watch out. It'll be powering over the top of them. Quite confident on this horse's chances. And at $11, it doesn't deserve to be that price. Legacies for a second. Uh, was a forgivable run last start. Didn't have a lot of luck and was wide. Jamie Carr takes the ride and with the intention to ride the horse uh, at the rear of the field can improve from 14. Poor effect was a good run last start and Dissonic Boone the same coming out of the Jim Maloney but Zardozzi for mine and the Edward Manifold. I'm actually really confident on this one. 15 each way. Race number five at Flemington is the group two Dane Hill stakes over the 1100 metres and I'm with I am unstoppable on top. Was a really good run last start. Has been running really well this campaign. Two starts for two placings. And I think he's third up. Ready to win here. Zach Spain sticks. Barry number two. Right part of the straight. Drew a terrible alley last start. Now it draws better and has a weight advantage on Archo Nacho, who did win that did win uh, the race that they both come out of being the Poseidon. And I think I'm in some can turn the tables on Archo Nacho. Libertad, the Sydney Colt coming down, can run well for Annabelle Nation. And Don 
Don Corleone. I'm really surprised he's nineteen dollars. Uh, I think he should be a bit shorter than that. Fifty that win on I am unstoppable, and two win three are placed on Don Corleone. Is how I'm going to play the group two. Dane Hill Stakes. Race number six is flowing in as the group two rows of Kingston Stakes over the 1400 metres and Princess Grace, clearly the one to beat here. James McDonald for Chris Waller coming out of group one racing, two group one seconds, prior, then going to the Maccabi Diva and running fourth. Barrier number five is absolutely perfect. It's odds on for a reason and I think it could, it'll start a lot shorter than $1.65. Clearly the one to beat. Skew if for second. Group one winner already. I'm, I'm surprised it's not... Uh, look, Princess Grace is clearly the one to beat, but Skew F should be closer to it. And I'm convinced 850s is over the odds for this horse, and I think it's going to run well. Life Lessons coming out of the uh, Let's Elope at Flemington. And Star Tonos at Queenslander for fourth over the odds at $18. With 40 the win, Princess Grace, and 5 the win on Skew F in the Group 2 Rose of Kingston Stakes. Race number seven at Florian is the group three, the Bart Cummings for Lexus over 25, 20 Ash run on top for Mar Eustace Marks, uh, the Melbourne Cup winning combination from last year, and I think that they can get another run into the Melbourne Cup here, being Ash run. Uh, first up, ran over 1,700, ran a cracker. Second up, 2,500 metres, or 25, 20, I think, and run a really good race, and be winning here. For an eight-year-old, he's, he's only having his 16th start, so lightly to race, and I think he can take the Bart Cummings out this year at the Baskin for second. Um, John O'Shea brings it south. J-Mac to ride everything going for it. First Immortal, I was happy to take on at the price. A little bit too short for mine. Does drop in weight and looks a star of the future. But Barry number 20, it's going to have to do it hard from out there. And Goldman already in the Melbourne Cup. First go, 2,500 this prep. And I'm interested to see how it goes. But Ash run for mine in the Bart Cummings. I think he can win 10 each way. Race number eight at Fleming is the group one Turnbull stakes over the 2,000 metres and Romantic Warrior. Why isn't he shorter? He's clearly the one to beat here. James McDonald in the set on multiple group one performed horse. He's had a total of 14 starts for 10 wins and a couple of minor placings. And I, I think he's clearly the one to beat here. West Wind blows for second. Probably looking for a Caulfield Cup trip, but I'm interested to see how it goes. World-class trains, world-class jock in the saddle. Jamie Expenses, I do believe, only riding Flemington for the weekend. So, um, for a world-class jock for him, there will be riding only one horse. It's got to be right up there in your numbers. Ossipenko for third. Fourth up, hard fit coming out of Group 1 racing. Damien Oliver in the saddle, drawn six for Chris Will, I think, can run well. And Gold Trip ran an absolute blinder first up, and I think can run well here in a attempt to... Uh, looking to go to the Caulfield Cup and the Melbourne Cup again. A romantic warrior in the Turnbull for mine. He'll win it and look a good chance in the Cox Plate. 60 the win. Race number nine at Flemington is the Group 2 Gilgai Stakes over the 1,200 metres. And I've got Seamus Jeek on top taking on Star Patrol here. I think Seamus Jeek's the one to beat. Coming out of the Cockrum and running fourth was a close finish there. 55 kilos for McKee T. Graham Bag, Barrier 7. And all points to him, for my in my opinion. Showmanship for second is an absolute outstanding talent. Mark Zara rides just a query first up, though. He's drawn well. If he'd had a run... And run well last start. I probably would put him on top, but he's over the odds. at seventeen dollars for mine. Star Patrol. Yes, he's been impressive. He's a couple of goes up the straight, um, but he goes right up in weight from winning the um, winning winning last start. And I don't think he can do it with the weight. But Ben Malam sticks. Jigsaw will be flying in front, but how much gas will he have at the end? Same as Jig for mine. Uh, they'll go hard here, and I think he'll be. She'll be flying. I think she'll be flying over the top of them and winning. Uh, so 35 the win on Shea you and 7 each way on Showmanship in the Group 2 Galgai Stakes. And race number 10 at Florian is the listed Paris Lane Stakes to end the day. It's over 1,400 metres and I'm with Tamer Lane on top. And he's a standout in this race. I'm really confident on his chances to win the last. Damien Lane for James Cummings drawn beautifully in Barry number 12. Uh, he'll, like, he'll get back for the barrier, but he'll be charging home, and I'm confident he's going to be scoring the last race of the day, being the Paris Lane. Charter House for second is a talented horse. Second up, I think, can run well, but from barrier 16, it's going to make it a bit hard. Omgar was flying, uh, just needs a bit of luck, and has had a couple of chances this campaign that drops full kilos off its last start run. And Stageman, don't be surprised to see it rocketing home. It's going to run a cracker. But for mine, Tamer Lane in the Paris Lane will be winning the last 25 the win. Thank you everyone for watching my pre for Group 1 Turnbull Stakes Day. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I found some winners here to bounce back off what was a disappointing weekend last week. And I hope you enjoy it. And 
Looking forward to Caulfield Guinea's Day next Saturday. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy.